So today these folks have asked me to come here and speak about myself and my journey with music, which should be fairly easy considering I am me. But um, I found myself to be extremely confused as to what to talk about. Now usually I'm like one of those proper desi moms who pack like six months ahead before like an international trip or whatever. But like so basically I plan. So it was very confusing for me because I, I didn't know what to say here today, right? So I'm just going to stand here for the next couple of minutes and talk about my life. I was around seven years old when I started singing. And by singing, I mean just around the house for humans that either created me, my parents, or humans that shared those parents with me, my sister. Now, this pattern stuck around for a while because I was too shy to sing for anyone other than my family because I felt like all of the other anyones were out to get me. I was born and raised in the kingdom of Thailand and went to an international school basically all my life, which is where the Oreo effect stems from, the whole looking like a brown chick but sounding like a, like a white chick, that, that's where this comes from. <laughs> but um, So growing up as a brown kid in Thailand wasn't easy. I looked different. The pigment of my skin was something my peers viewed as similar to dirt, and I was close to invisible. But I quickly grew a fond liking towards the invisibility. Now, being a victim of bullying for most of my life, most of my elementary and middle school life, wasn't too easy and it gave me issues that I deal with till date. If you follow me on Instagram or don't, quick plug in, world of August, but um, I talk about the fact that I deal with anxiety a lot on there. And um, I pretty much deciphered that this anxiety was something that triggered from the stuff I dealt with back in school. Going back to the invisibility bit, there was a point in my life where my restlessness and the beginning stages of my anxiety um, basically resulted in me abreasting the way I felt and disconnecting from the people around me. I went to school, sat through my classes, ate a popsicle for lunch in a bathroom cubicle for yeah, all my lunch break, and then finished my classes and went home. I found comfort and solace in not being noticed and just blending in with the crowd. I seeked it. This continued for a while, and then I found music. And I know this is going to sound really corny as hell, but music saved me. I was in so The environment that I was in during school was so adverse that music became my anchor. I literally listened and sang and listened and sang the pain away. I'm blessed with one of the most amazing families ever that constantly provided me with various different genres of music, but I quickly grew a strong liking towards Western music. I started developing the clarity that I longed for through my passion. Music just made me feel like everything was going to be OK. Fast forward to a couple of years in the future, where my family moved from the city of Saratburi to the city of Chonburi, which is down south. This move and the school I went to was probably one of the best things to have happened to me. It was a school that comprised of mostly Thais, Koreans, and a lot of Caucasians. And I ended up being one of the only three brown kids in the whole school. Now, I'm telling you this because the school reacted to it in a very different way than I expected to. The people at the school embraced difference with open arms. They were curious to know about my culture, my food, but most importantly, me. Now, you can imagine why this was so hard for me to stomach, because I went from being someone who would literally walk the other way if I saw, if I saw someone coming towards me in the hallway, to being invited to sit at lunch tables. This was the first time where I suddenly felt like, OK, maybe the whole world isn't out to get me. I met some of the most important people in my life there. I met my best friend in the whole world. And with her and a couple of other people, school quickly became something that I looked forward to. People were constantly building me up. And that wasn't something I was used to. And they weren't telling me that, oh, you sucked at everything. I remember there was a time where I was sitting with a couple of friends at lunch, and I was singing for no apparent reason. And enter Mr. Waltho. Now, this man changed my life in a time in a huge, huge way. He taught music and band and asked if I was interested in taking that class. And before I knew it, I dropped chemistry and took IB music. Now, this class was mostly focused on Mozart's skill and Beethoven's pizzazz, things that I had no idea about. But every month, there, were this there was this thing called IB recitals. Every month, we would have to prepare a piece with our instrument of choice, mine was voice, and present it to the class. Now, with the bruised confidence that I held, the first couple of recitals were hell. I would start freaking out before every one of them and beat myself up about dropping chemistry to take this class. This brings me to something that Mr. Waltho said when he told me I should sign up for a talent show or something at the time. There are always going to be people that will try to bring you down, but you cannot bank on them and close your heart and mind to what others can show you. Sometimes it can be petrifying, but sometimes it can be beautiful. 
You just have to make the very best of it. I know that sounds very preachy, but trust me, it helped me at the time. <laughs> at this point, I'd started my YouTube channel and would put up short snippets of my videos on Instagram. And I remember the highest number of views I would get were around 80 to 100. And I remember being ecstatic about it. And fast forward to now, having participated on the stage season two, actively posting on social media and doing shows in different parts of the country, I feel truly, wholly, and completely blessed. Being given a platform to reach out to so many different people from around the world isn't something that happens every day, and my gratitude for this sees absolutely no bounds. So I recently spoke about this on Instagram as well, but the whole social media world can be very easily, can easily become one of the most taxing, emotionally draining, and lonely feelings ever, and it did for me. I found myself constantly comparing my art to others, constantly feeling like I lack consistency because she or he is posting every day, whereas I'm just not. Now, what I did to combat this was take a step back and realize why I even started doing this, because it brought me happiness. Being able to share my music with my viewers brings me true joy. Being able to talk to them on chat about artists, shows, and even our problems in our daily lives is something I never dreamed that I'd be able to do. And that's what I needed to focus on. So for any aspiring bloggers, musicians, comedians, etc., being able to connect with your audience on such a personal level like social media lets you do is amazing. But things might get really blurry really fast from time to time. Just always remind yourself of why you started doing what you're doing. When your body gets tired, you sit down, you take a nap, or you know you do things to like slow down. But why are we so quick to disregard our minds? Take a breather once in a while. Stop, look around you. We're just a tiny seed in a world so vast, so massive, and with so much to offer. Observe, believe in others, the world, but most importantly, in yourself. And I know, again, this sounds corny, but trust me, guys, it worked for me. I will just leave you guys on one note. In conclusion to everything that I talked about today, as the children of the 21st century, let's make a pact to ourselves and the world. I will do good, I will treat well, I will do what I love, and I will give it my all, and trust me, the universe will give, give you everything you ever ask for. Oh, misty eye, earth and mountain below Keep careful watch of my brother's soul And should the sky be filled with Fire and smoke Keep watching over and doing If this is to end in fire Then we should all burn together Raise a list of Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, thank you so much.